So yesterday I did a dictation that had, it was an interview on TED Talks. And so I wanted to do something that had multiple speakers so I can show you um, two things. First of all, how the speakers look when you dictate them. And um, you'll notice here over on the right where it says speakers, I've put the information in. I looked at the transcript to see how um, Ted handled them. So I set up the speakers based on that. And um, I said SP1, SP2, SP3, and SP4. And so this is what they look like when I was dictating. Just this is, I am in scope, but this is what it looked like as I was dictating. And I'm looking at it now when I probably needed to change my um, spacing because it looks like it might be single space, but that's neither here nor there. That's for me to fix later. So I'm going to close out of this. And so yesterday I dictated three jobs, but I want to do correction on the job with speakers um, so that you can see how to correct with markers. So what I'm going to do, um, there's two ways that you can correct in, in speech cart. Once you have dictated and you are still in the cart job, you can do correction there. But once you close out of the cart screen, you have to do correction in open with scratch pad or open in scratch pad, which is this button, the yellow sticky note with the blue arrow pointing into it. So that's where I'm going to go now. I'd like to um, make a note here just that Michelle is obviously set up in, um, I think it's options, to be in page view here, which is why you see the physical page. You, you, you wouldn't, like on my screen, I don't have it set for page view, so I don't actually see the gray area. I only see, you know, the text in, in the white area. So that's just an option. Some people like to see the page view. I personally would prefer the text to be closer. So that's what I do. Uh, I agree with you. I think it was set like this by default and I haven't changed it. Gotcha. Yeah. You might want to show people where they can go and do that. It's in the style. Oh, it, it is? Okay. Well, no, maybe not. Let's check. Okay, we'll go to options. Oh, have to wait for it to finish loading. It's basically saying you are being impatient. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> so I'm going to go to options, and I think page view is actually, yep, you're right, Adria, open with script. On the options, it's the page view tab. You have to just arrow to the page view tab. And I don't know that it's going to affect this job. It's going to, it may not affect it till we come back into it. Right. Right. Okay. So here we are. Um, I'll tell you this much. At the beginning of every job, I warm up. And that's what this first section is. The Q and A, um, because I've been working with court reporters so long, I always dictate my Q's and A's and speakers um, as a warm up, and I say new job before I start actually dictating. And it looks like I have a few false starts here. Okay, all right. So once the job has loaded, it'll say down here um, loaded voice data. And you have to wait till that happens um, before you can start correcting. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put my cursor. I'm going to go past my warm up to here where it looks like I've actually started. And I'm going to, there's two ways that we can start. Well, first of all, I'm going to get on the soapbox and talk about correction because I do this every time I train. Correction. <clears throat> Is very important. It's the only tool that lets you listen to what you've done on the job and correct and train Dragon based on that. Um, 
now as you're in school, you may not be as nervous as you are when you start working and your pitch and your tone is going to be a little different possibly because of that. Um, also, the speeds are going to be different when you start working. Um, so correct, correcting what you've done on the job is really important for those reasons. And so what we're about to do correction mechanism is and I think Diane said the other day that she didn't think that, but this is one of the most, one of the most important tools for building your accuracy. Um, so with that being said, Adria, do you have anything to add? Um, I think that, you know, what I tell people is if you truly want to become as accurate as you can be, it is imperative that you spend 15 minutes doing correction for each job that you do or at least three times a week. And so I'm basically asking for a commitment of, um, you know, 45 minutes a week. So you don't have to start at the beginning. That's something that a lot of people don't know. You can start anywhere in the job and you can even set a timer for yourself on your phone and say, I'm only going to work on this for 15 minutes because then I have other things to do. And 15 minutes is good. And I ask, a lot of people say, why 15 minutes? And what I say is because I do believe that anyone can achieve perfection for 15 minutes. I think beyond that, we start to get distracted and we aren't paying close enough attention. And when, when we're talking about correction, Perfection is a requirement. It's not an option. It is a requirement. It must be perfect. And the reason it must be perfect is because whatever mistakes you make in correction will come back to haunt you in dictation. That's my 10 cents. Okay. So what I've done is I've set the timer on my phone. I'm going to go ahead and press start. Just so you know, what we plan on doing is I'm going to correct for about 15 minutes and then we're going to let you guys do correction for about 10 minutes. That was our plan so that yeah. you can ask us questions as you're correcting. You'll have us here on the spot. So I'm going to press start. And this button is for correction mode. This will get you into correction mode. And when I press the button, it's going to highlight the utterance. Now I'm going to turn it off again, and Control K is also the hot key to get you into correction. Speak three. I prefer to keep my hand on the keyboard, so I use the hot keys. And <clears throat> page down is the hot key to move to the next utterance. So, President Amina. Okay, now here it's, it's important to note that while it is correct, it's, it has abbreviated president. And so if Michelle wants to teach Dragon that she's not interested in abbreviations, she would actually change it and remove the, the period as well, which is what she did. Now, I will tell you this much. It's because my option, my formatting options are not set correctly. Let's go and look at that. Okay. So the Dragon formatting is this button with the dollar sign January and AM. And I would need to uncheck abbreviate titles. Did you want to say anything else about this, Adrian? Well, I guess the one thing that I would want to say is um, no one knows about the the options that you should have checked better than um, a working cart provider. And so I would ask Mandy and Steve uh, what they think about these options and which ones should be set for car. I'm going to look at mine real quick. Okay. Because what you're seeing here is web and email addresses. That means I'm guessing it would put in a link. Because what y'all have to understand is that a lot of the options that we currently have checked um, 
on on our dragon options which michelle controls all of that and you know those have been designed for court reporters because that has been our primary audience for 20 years now that we are working with card providers and captioners we need to know what is right for card providers and captioners i have um web and email addresses checked okay. and dates okay. and units of measure okay prices um mil and the bottom two like million instead of zero 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 which i um yeah i should have that checked and yeah that's it super okay so you want units of measure to come out like as kg instead of kilogram well uh i'm still playing with it i i like it and i'm, I'm trying to ask my students like would you rather have the word truthfully i'd rather have the word but I kind of like it. I work so many advanced chemistry and bio classes. It just makes life a lot easier when that happens in those. Very good. Very good information for all of us. Thank you, Mandy. Mm -hmm. And it's possible that you may have to change it per, per client? Uh, I guess so. But really, I just have these awesome little things called real-time rules. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Love them. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click on OK out of this. Okay. Now, um, her name was also spelled with an H at the end. Oh. So. Okay. So I'm going to do page down. Come on, thank you for joining us, period. Even as, can y'all hear that? Yes. Okay. Thank you for joining us, period. Even as. Okay, so notice I played the audio again. There's two options to play. There's Alt P, as in pirate. <laughs> or playback. Or playback here. Or F5, if your function keys work properly. So it was good. So I'm going to do page down again. Ted, speakers go. Come on. You're something of an of a overachiever. Speak for laughs. Now, Ted, speakers go. Come on. You're something of an of a overachiever. Speak for laughs. Michelle, may I ask you a question here? Yes. And this might uh, be more of a question for Mandy. But um, in TED Talks, isn't the TED um, T cap all uppercase? Yes. Okay. And I guess that matters, right? Um, because otherwise it's a name. Yeah. The only thing is, is I don't know if I would leave it because it was, I mean, it was right. I don't know. But I'll go ahead and do this. So. Okay. Everything else. If you else. change that, Ted, if you change that capitalized Ted, um, away from the way it was, then every time you say the word TED, will it come out, capital TED? Possibly, yes. Okay. And so that might be a reason not to change it and just, you know, um, do editing on the fly when it comes up. You can... Um, or just real-time it, right? Like I would do... Exactly. Hey, Mac, hey, Mac, Don Mac, and then it would be right. Okay, yeah. or you could create a real-time rule group or folder called TED Talks, and every time it sees the word TED, it can replace it with capital T-E-D. Yeah, real-time rules. You know, then you wouldn't have to say so much. Right. Good point. If I was going to do it on the fly, I probably would stick it in my um, train okay. one, train two, that sort of thing. That's Very a, wise, yes. That's a good idea, too. It would be a good idea to do that in your, you know what, if you had a style for TED Talks, for example, you could have it, have the untranslate built into the style as a default. True. Okay. So I'm And also, Michelle, I'm, uh, pardon me, I'm so sorry. This would be a very good example of something that you would want to add to your accuracy journal. Oh, very good point. Let me write that down. 
Okay, I'm going to do page down now. SB1, you have a PhD in organic chemistry, period. You're vice chancellor at the University of Mauritius, period. You're a successful entrepreneur, period. You won numerous awards for your work in science, and you're the first Muslim female head of state in Africa, period. Okay, so here, this is actually, I'm going to use my uh, control Y, which is word swap, to change to the form of your that I need to be here. Because they put the wrong form of the word your. So I did control Y and notice it changed to you or your apo you apostrophe or E. Okay? Okay. Now I want you to notice that the reason I um, wanted to show you the job in scope was that the speakers had the uh, chevrons and then the name, but here we just see asterisk speaker one asterisk. And that's because that's the written form of the word versus the spoken form of the word. <clears throat> and so one of the rules of correction mechanism is, and my, my markers came out properly, but one of the rules of correction mechanism is that you have to correct to the written word form of the word versus the spoken form of the word. And so if you had to correct the speaker, you would correct it this way. And I'll just show you, I'm going to go to vocabulary editor and I'm going to go to my custom words only because not only do I have my speakers, but I have the app, what I call app Mac. So when you're correcting and you have a, a voice brief or a marker, you have to correct to what's on this side, the written form versus the spoken form. And so you can also see here, I have app Mac for applause. So if I say app Mac and it doesn't come out right, I would actually have to put in the um, brackets, applause brackets. So remember when you're correcting, if you say one of your markers, even the untranslates, you have to um, correct to the written form here. Okay, so I'm going to page down. Do you have anything to add, Adria? No, that's perfect. And of course, you're no stranger to the TED Global stage. You gave a talk in 2014 period. Did you have any political ambitions at that time? Question mark. How did you go from academic to president? Well, this is just silly. Okay. Speed two. Thanks, Stephanie. First of all, I'd like to. Here we go. Thanks, Ted, for having given me the opportunity to be here today. And I'd also like to thank the government of Tanzania and the president for the welcome period. Okay. I'll listen. I believe, Michelle, mm -hmm. I believe. The opportunity was this opportunity. Okay, let me look. Can I listen to it again? Thank Please. Thank you, Ted, for having given me the opportunity to be here today. And I'd also like to thank the government of Tanzania and the president for the welcome period. It sounds to me like the. Highlight just me the opportunity. Me the opportunity. To yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. That's okay. It's better to be safe than sorry. And You're also, right. I'd like to thank the contribution of our council, Kama, Mr. Rizvi, who's here, Kama. And also, Kama, I'd like to thank the contribution of our council, Kama, Mr. Rizvi, who's here, Kama, who's been very supportive for all of our stay here period. Now, Kama, to answer to your question, Kama, did I have it in? Okay. Perfect ambitions in politics question mark the straight answer is no period i did not choose the world of politics comma the world of politics chose me period so here i am period at my would was the ambitions oh, in politics was that ambitions in politics or and Ambitions in politics. Oh, question you're mark. right. The straight answer is no. Period. I did not choose the world. See, and for me, that's a word swap. It is Ambitions because that's a very politics. common problem that I have. 
Me too. And that's already on my accuracy journal. The world of politics chose me, period. So here I am, period, at Mac. Speed one. So, come up. Was there ever anything in your... In your... Mm -hmm. Journey that ever made you think that one day you'd be... Hmm. Journey that ever made you think that one day you'd be... Think that one day was what I heard. Yes, but I don't know if I can hear. Journey that ever made you think that one day you big. One day you big. I, I, I don't know. Well, okay. I don't know that I would correct this because I can't understand what I'm saying at the end. So why don't you show them how to toggle the correction then? Well, I didn't make any changes to it, so I can't. Uh, okay. Let's see. Let me... Let Journey me that ever made you think that one day you big... Oh, pressing the wrong button. Okay. Okay, so when you're correcting... And if you start correcting an utterance and you don't want to use it, this button here is toggle correction. This actually hides the utterance so that dragon does not learn from it. I have a tendency to correct, start correcting before I listen to the whole utterance. If you weren't on the computer with me, that's what I would be doing. And so if I listen to the utterance and part of it is unintelligible, I would toggle the correction because I don't want Dragon to learn from it. One of the other rules of correction is if any part of the utterance, and an utterance is defined by what you see in orange because Dragon handles the utterances as you're dictating. Um, it's a group of word that it, words that it um, uses together, creates together based on your speech patterns. And so you have to correct the whole utterance or none of the utterance when you're correcting. It's all or nothing. And if any part of the utterance is, is unintelligible, like it is at the end, I'm not quite sure what I said, I would not want to correct it because I wouldn't want Dragon to learn from that. Okay. And so when you, when you go off of it, would you show them how it turns red? Just do previous, uh, okay. Question mark. Did you ever imagine that? Okay. So I think what you can all see, it maybe looks purple, but it's not the same color as the, as the other, other, correct, other corrections. The corrections that she made that are correct are actually green, whereas the one that she toggled to, she toggled off of correction is a different color. And I hear that your timer went off. So it's time now to turn off correction and go to utterance summary. May I say something? This yes. is Diane. Um, I thought that I heard at the end of that first paragraph, first of all, I'd like to thank. And then farther down again, I thought that I heard I'd I apostrophe D again, and I'm not sure if that's my speakers on the computer or if that should be changed. Always good to listen again. SB2. Thanks, Stephanie. First of all, I'd like to... you right. Yeah. Thank you for catching that. And where's the other one? Um, yes. Also, Kama, I'd like to thank the contribution of our council, Kama, Mr. Rizvi, who's here, Kama, who's been very supportive for all of our stay here period. Now, Michelle, did they say, did, did you say, I'd like to thank Ted or to thank Ted? End of the first paragraph. Ah. Speed two. Thanks, Stephanie. First of all, I'd like to thank Stephanie. Ted for having given me. Oh, no, nope. you said thanks, Ted. Okay. Yeah. Now, while we're still here, we should probably go over the other rules of correction because we yeah. haven't met with all of them. So 
Uh, do you want to go over them, Adria, or do you want me to? Uh, you can go ahead. That's fine. Okay. So we went over the first two. The next rule of correction is if you say the wrong word, you have to correct to the wrong word. So, um, like I said, thanks. Here I said instead of I'd like to thank Ted, I said thanks, Ted. So I have to correct to what I actually said versus what I actually meant to say. Right. Okay. That's important because when you're correcting, it has to match. The text has, the utterance has to match match exactly what you hear and the biggest problem dragon has is with the smaller words as you can see with my eye so you really want to make sure thank you diane for catching that that you correct those little things because that's how dragon is going to learn the next rule of correction is don't add punctuation that you did not dictate it's a big problem for court reporters um, because they want to correct it to make the transcript perfect but if you did not say any of the punctuation you would not add it in there there's a time and a place for that right and it's not here not here the next one is make sure you spell the words correctly when you're doing correction because if you don't it will add them to your dictionary i'll give you an example um in real time coach there is a dictation that talks about mount everest and I dictated it, and when I did correction mechanism, I did Everest with an X instead of an S, because I'm a bad typist. And so the next time I did the dictation, it came out Everest. And so I realized quickly that I had made a mistake. And I was able to delete the word out of my vocabulary, but you know, just make sure that you're spelling everything correctly when you're doing correction. And I'll tell you a little secret that I use. If I'm not quite sure how a word is spelled, I will Google it or I'll even come to vocabulary editor and type in the word like, let's say pneumonia. Maybe that's not, yeah. Uh, you know, I would usually look, I can start typing the word and see exactly how to spell it. I don't make any changes, but I use it as a point of reference sometimes. And there's one more rule, Adria. What did I miss? There's six rules. Um, don't add it if you didn't say it. No punctuation markers. God, Michelle, I don't remember. Everything oh. is second nature to me. What? Yeah. What is it? I guess if any part of the utterance is unintelligible, you make sure you toggle the correction. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think that's it. I think that's it. So this, the rules are very simple. Yeah. So are we now ready to go to utterance summary? We are. I'll tell you all a little bit about utterance summary. Utterance summary is what we, we refer to as you know, your last chance to double check yourself. And I think that a lot of us, when we're in a hurry, tend to say, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a perfectionist. I know I did it right. And, and you can just send everything through right here, right now, by clicking on the big B with the red X on it. But that is not our suggestion. And that's because, believe it or not, you're only human and you make mistakes. And because right now we have so many eyes watching and Diane caught the eye, you know, um, it, it with, that's not, you know, you normally do not have other people watching you correct. And so it's in the utterance summary that we're able to see where we made mistakes because we don't always have additional eyes. It would be nice if we did. So now, Michelle, let's go to utterance summary. And it's this green speech bubble with the table inside of it. It's going to ask oh. if you want to save your speech files before you do it. And I always say no here. I wait till the end. And I cancel out of this. Okay, now what you have here is on the left is the original text, meaning that is the original translation 
from dragon of what you said and on the right is what you actually corrected and then the third column says apply and there's just a little box with a check mark in it because by default um, we do want to apply everything but before we just accept everything we actually go and listen to everything and what you're really wanting to watch is what's on the right side under corrected so you hit play so president amina that's correct play and speakers go come on. you're something of a of an overachiever speak for laughs if you had corrected the entire job and you were sure there were no errors you can save it for vocabulary building at a later time i'm going to cancel at this point. what you see is that everything that was previously green is now blue that means that that text has been what we call pushed through to the engine and we use that term um frequently and and when we use that term we mean that you have blue text dragon has learned from those corrections so if there is a mistake anywhere in that blue text you're going to need to go and hunt it down in the vocabulary editor to make sure that it's not a permanent part of your vocabulary but now dragon has learned as you can see that took you know 15 minutes of time but we were doing a lot of discussion normally in 15 minutes i'd have this whole thing done you well, know this talk was i think 20 minutes so oh maybe not then i generally do dictations that are five minutes long yeah. and so with a five minute dictation i can correct the whole thing in 15 minutes but for 20 minutes no maybe not but that's okay that's absolutely okay because remember we're shooting for perfection i have a question when you're in scratch pad correcting and you first you click on the the uh, a thing for correction mode and then when so how do i get to the next when i hit it just does the first one how do i move to the next utterance page, how do you page down okay thank you page down and page up okay and page up will go to the previous one if like if you're already on the next one and you see you have a mistake hit page up and it'll go to the previous one so you can edit okay. it again thank you you're well, welcome one thing i did forget to say is that um i use this a lot and i find my recognition is good so i don't have to delete so much but control d is the hot key to delete a word and with dragon it's usually a misrecognition versus a misspelled word so what I usually do is correct to the right word and then do control D to delete the wrong word. That's the high key that I probably use the most when I'm correcting. Me too. Would this be something I would do, these corrections, if I keep getting the wrong T-H-E-R-E -E, or I've been having trouble with my period not working, I say peer, and oftentimes I say the word peers and it gets it wrong. Would that be when I would like put it in my mind after this job I need to go through corrections? yes okay and there's another thing that i do mandy when that happens is if it if it says like let's say that i say pirk and that's my period and i get peers well then i would actually go into vocabulary editor and i would bring up the word peers and i would train it i would say it you know hit go train uh peers again go peers you know and i, I train it about five times and then i would go to my peer and i would train it about five times because i believe that when dragon is having a problem discerning one word from another word that sounds like it oftentimes training both of those words clears that confusion up for dragon okay thanks sure i have a question about the there's too does dragon usually pick them up like the differences and if they don't like is that something i should be training in my in the like in custom words or anything that's a great question and that 
has to do with context analysis. Okay. As, as you do learn from specific documents and you feed Dragon the context of your speech and your speech, if you're a card provider, is going to be all over the place. You could be dealing with microbiology or you could be dealing with, um, you know, the Mayan civilization and history or, you know, there, there's so many different things that you could be covering. And so there's going to be a lot of um, different text that you need to feed Dragon in order for it to learn. But the more Dragon knows you, the more it understands your language of speaking, the way you speak, the more it's going to get those homonyms correct. Because context analysis is really what helps you with those kinds of words. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so Mich while Michelle's finding it, I'm going to explain to you guys that, um, and you may see this if, if you have used the speakers at all, it is extremely common for people to get speak to for speak to. Speak one. Re that sounded like speak one. Well, no, it's at the end of the utterance. Oh, okay, right. Okay, I, just, I, I pressed stop so that, you know, I would have it here when you're ready for me. Okay. So in this unique situation, um, not only did Michelle get speak to instead of speed to, but the utterance broke in the middle of her speak and to. And so it's very difficult. Well, you can't do it. You cannot correct one word or one marker that is split up between two utterances. And so, Michelle, if you would play the end, just that, just that very ending part of your utterance. President of your country, question mark, speak. There you go. And so it does sound, in fact, like speak, um, but I, I hear the spee more than I hear the K, but I could see how when Dragon cut it off, it turned it into speak instead of speak to. Right. In, you know, in this scenario, um, and then the, in the next sentence, in the next utterance, play it again, Mitch. It's important for many reasons, period. Two. It's important for many reasons, period. So, in, in this instance, I'm clearly hearing speak in one utterance and two in another. And so I would not change that because if you changed it, it would basically eliminate both of those utterances because you cannot correct across utterances. Yes. So in this situation, you would not change the speak to to speaker to, but you would definitely want to go and train speed to a little bit more to make sure that it is in fact understanding speed to instead of speak to because there are going to be times when you are going to need to say speak to well and also i think i paused too long between the speed and the two i didn't say speed to i said speed to so part of that is me right and i recognize that there, there's a, something that, you know, um, is, is sort of sensitive, you know, and so don't be offended as we have this conversation, but one of the things that Michelle and I both agree on is that in correction, one of the most important things is being honest with yourself. You have to say, oh, that was me, just like Michelle said. Well, see, that was me because I paused between spee and two. And so it turned it into speak in one utterance to in another. And so it's very important. You don't have to admit it to anybody else. You just have to admit to yourself when, oh, that was me. That was not Dragon. That was me. And you're going to have greater success if you can truly listen to your dictation and say, 
Well, I screwed that up. And so, no wonder Dragon got it wrong. And that's a very important thing that we all have to do, is just accept that there are going to be times when the problem is our own. Yeah, I found that a lot that and recently that a lot of the mistakes are me not being able to keep up with the speaker or m making mistakes. So I'm really glad you you talked about the toggle because I didn't know what to do <laughs> with that. So yes. that was a huge help today. Thank you. Well, well you, know what, you know what I'm discovering too, and this might help those of you who are just learning cart like me. If I make a mistake and I misspeak the word, a lot of times I'll speak it again. And so I'm finding that dragon sometimes when I misspeak, it gets the right word. So I'm trying not to speak words multiple times because I knew I got it wrong and just leave it as the one way I said it and I could do correction. But if I say it twice, then I have more mistakes and, um, and Dragon may have gotten it right anyway, even though I didn't speak it exactly the way I should. But if you, if you get it wrong and you know you got it wrong as soon as it comes out of your mouth, you could say Delmac and then say the right word, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. We haven't, we haven't gotten to those yet. <laughs> okay. And, and that's something that for the rest of you, um, you know, in the beginning, it's overwhelming to think that number one, you can go as fast as some of these working um, voice writers go. And believe it or not, you will get there. Um, it doesn't always feel like you're going to get there in the beginning. But with voice writing, I believe with my whole heart that you have to stay on your game. You have got to always practice and always correct and always continue to strive for perfection in your dictation and in your listening skills. Um, my personal biggest fear about CART is having to, um, what the military reporters used to call summarize. What's the word that I'm looking for? Paraphrase. Thank you. That's it. That is my biggest fear because for 20 years I've been voice writing the way court reporters voice write, which is just verbatim. And so to me, verbatim is much easier than paraphrasing. Mandy, do you or Steve have any, um, any feelings on that? verbatim is way easier than paraphrasing i think and that is the biggest when i have a court reporter that wants to do cart and i'm working with them that's the biggest issue usually is trying to paraphrase because you have to actually think yes. while you're doing everything so but we do have to do it we have to do it a lot okay and and how long did it take you if you do remember you may not but how long did it take you to get into that place where you were comfortable with paraphrasing probably a year of solid cart that's that's a good um that's a thank you that that's good that's a good information because that's not something i would know but steve he started pair i mean he started out as a cart provider so maybe he um it's not so bad for him since he started paraphrasing i mean i trained him that he's just gonna have to cool. yeah so he just he he was just able to pick it up right away right because he didn't do court reporting school and so it wasn't drilled in him get something for every single thing you know right right well what a, i bet that was a a plus then yeah i don't know any different honestly so i don't know really what to compare it to that's perfect. So for you, um, it, it seemed very natural to just paraphrase. Yeah, absolutely. It just, I don't, I don't know. I just, it comes natural. I don't know. That's beautiful. Beautiful. Do you, do you find yourself thinking about it, Steve, or does it just happen? I don't, I don't, I try not to, obviously. The only time I really, um, really paraphrase is if I get really far behind and I have the, you know, I have the, the meaning of everything, you know, with me, I can just tweak out a little bit, catch right back up with it. But yes. m most of the time when, when I get a professor and they're just all over the place, they are just false starts. They just, 
go every which way direction. Sometimes I just have to sit back and paraphrase just to get through that point of the meaning of what they're trying to convey. Yeah. yeah. You know, because some professors are just, they're just very difficult to keep a complete sentence in their mouth. That's just very difficult for them to do that. So that's when I paraphrase it, I think, the most. Very good. That makes sense. And I think that when I'm doing a dictation in the office and maybe I, I haven't warmed up and I started on a pretty high dictation, like if I'm trying to do 225, for me, that's out of my normal range. And so when it gets fast like that and, and I stress about dropping words, I have paraphrased in that instance. But I, I sort of have to be forced into it. 